What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So this is the T-Mobile Revel V Plus 5G. And you'll have to forgive me if I'm a little harsh on this phone. There's just something about carrier specific, carrier branded smartphones that tends to give off a certain vibe that isn't exactly positive. In fact, there aren't really that many carrier branded phones anymore because the big name manufacturers make great affordable devices. There's almost no sense in trying to compete, but T-Mobile continues to attempt to do so with their own Revel brand. They made like two or three different Revel phones last year. This year, it's just this one new one here. And honestly, this phone is better than I expected. It's definitely a device for a more specific group of people though. Obviously, you need to be an existing or new T-Mobile customer to get it. You should also try to get this phone for free using T-Mobile's activation offer if you can. I don't think this phone is worth the full $199 retail price, I'll tell you that up front, but for T-Mobile users who want a 2021 5G device, that's free on their network plan, it's worth considering for sure. And I also wanna stress that whole 5G thing too. The main reason to even consider this phone really is because it's the cheapest 5G phone made for T-Mobile. Now, if you don't care about 5G at all, there's a dozen other phones you should get besides this one. But if you want to venture into the world of 5G and you know your area has the coverage, again, this phone probably fits the bill. So assuming you meet all the criteria, let's talk about what this phone offers now. And I think the first thing that stands out is its size. This is a big 6.82 inch device. That's the screen size, but with a fairly large bottom chin and thicker than average bezels framing the display, this device is going to feel even bigger than that. In fact, I think this is the largest phone I've used this year, just based on the total dimensions. And even for me, reaching the top, corner, and sides of the screen is a stretch to say the least. If you have the chance, I'd actually recommend trying out this phone in store because it's really that big and it may not work for everyone. However, if a big screen is what you want, there's really nothing bigger than this. I'll also say too that the design of this phone is kind of unique. It's a totally flat, very boxy form factor. It's basically shaped like a brick or an ice cream sandwich. It's just the flattest design with the sharpest edges. No curvy contours or flowing tapered sides. I really like how this phone feels though. It's like you've got something chunky and substantial in your hand. Material wise, the back is plastic. That's very obvious as soon as you touch it. The frame of the phone feels thicker and sturdier it might actually be metal. All in all, there's no quality issues really. It's still built well. And it does just come in this one color combo, black with a shiny pink stripe and T-Mobile logo across the back. At first, I really didn't mind the whole thing, but the more I've had this phone now, the more I wish it looked a little nicer or more interesting. And the IMEI printed on the back is a bit unsightly, but I get it. It's very on brand. It's a T-Mobile device and they want you to know that. And I guess it could have been a lot worse. The rest of the hardware is pretty solid. I really like the pronounced tactile volume buttons. You get a T-Mobile pink power button on the other side that doubles as your fingerprint sensor, and it's plenty fast. No complaints there. Glad to have it. At the bottom, there's the good old headphone jack and USB-C port for charging. Just one speaker on this phone, the one at the bottom there. It gets very loud actually, but tends to be a bit muffled and muddy the more you crank it up. Lots of detail in the sound though at lower volume, which is nice. And here's an audio sample so you can get an idea. Now, I think with a phone like this, you're definitely going to expect some compromises. It's supposed to be a budget phone after all, and the first less than ideal feature on this device is the screen. I already mentioned that the big size is great. Watching content on this thing is awesome, but at just a 1640 by 720 resolution, 257 pixels per inch, the display is the furthest thing from sharp. You can pick out all the pixels here, and I think not offering a full 1080p screen screen is the single biggest miss on this phone. I don't even mind that it's an IPS LCD panel. I kind of expected that, but with as big of a screen as this is, you need to have the proper resolution to balance that out. Now, is everyone going to care or even notice? Probably not, but if you are coming from a 1080p screen, I think you'll be able to tell right away. Also, there's some glare on this thing for sure. It doesn't get crazy 
bright, which makes it tougher to see outdoors sometimes, but that's not something I cared too much about. All in all, I think the viewing experience on this phone is good enough if all you care about is that big size, but if quality and sharpness is what you're after, this probably isn't for you. On the flip side, performance-wise, this phone was surprisingly good, and this is probably where I had the lowest expectations, but I was pleasantly surprised to say the least. On paper, the specs aren't too crazy. The MediaTek Dimensity 700 5G processor inside is pretty solid. It's a relatively new chipset that's benchmarked quite well. There's four gigs of RAM in this thing as well, which maybe isn't quite enough if you really push your phone hard throughout the day, but everyone's usage will vary. The real nice thing though is actually just the software experience. When I powered this phone on, I half expected there to be more T-Mobile bloatware and pre-installed garbage than there was default Android apps, but actually this phone ships with the most bare bones Android experience I've ever seen for a carrier device, and there wasn't a single T-Mobile branded app or pre-installed garbage game at all. In fact, the OS is so minimal that it might be a little intimidating for some people at first especially if you're coming from like a Samsung device, for example, where it's very customized and there's all sorts of apps and things to set up everywhere. This is very much a start from scratch sort of Android experience with just the basics. And all in all, I think this is a net positive more than anything else. It is nice to see that T-Mobile didn't litter this phone with junk and deliver it with half the storage already used up. What's also kind of nice is that if you want to push this phone harder, you totally can. I've played like a half a dozen games on this thing and while some of the apps apps do default to lower graphics settings. You can bump that up in the settings, at least to medium graphics or higher on some games, and there really isn't a noticeable drop in frame rate or playability. The MediaTek processor is definitely doing all the work here. I think, like I said, four gigs of RAM isn't quite enough in some cases to get into the apps quickly or in keeping 10 or 15 apps loaded up and running in the background. But if you wanted to play some of your favorite games on this phone, I don't see any issues in doing so. I personally have no complaints with the performance at all. And because this phone is so massive, there's also a big 5,000 milliamp battery inside as well. With this, there's sort of two things to mention though. On the one hand, if you aren't really a heavy user, this is gonna be nearly a two-day device on a single charge. With my own usage, I've blown past 14 or 15 hours of screen on time at least with 20% battery left or more. If you don't pull your phone out of your pocket for more than a few minutes at a time, I can imagine you'll never hit a low battery. But when you do need to charge, the 18 watt charging speeds mean you'll be attached to a cable for about two hours. There's no fancy fast charging here. There's no wireless charging on this phone either, by the way. But like I said, I don't think you'll be connected to the plug much anyway, which is nice. Finally, let's talk about all those cameras around back. Now, honestly, I thought this would be kind of a weak spot for this phone because the hardware doesn't seem like much at all and the AI assistance isn't usually a good add-on. Artificially enhanced pictures can be hit or miss and my suspicions were kind of correct. Pictures and videos from the Revel aren't always too great, but it's not all bad news. Spec-wise, the main lens is a 16 megapixel shooter. There's also a five megapixel ultra wide lens, which is nice to have, and a two megapixel depth sensor for portrait shots. The selfie camera is a 16 megapixel lens up front, and actually out of everything, so long as you turn off most of the AI enhancements, I actually think the phone does snap a good selfie picture, so that's definitely a point there. Now there's not a ton in regards to shooting modes and camera features. There's night mode, some manual controls, a couple other shooting modes that you'll usually find. There's 2K video, which is a weird resolution bump, but nice to have I suppose. Not much in the way of stabilization for video though. In practice, I think you can tell that while some scenes look kind of decent, there's definitely a lot that this phone will struggle with. I'll say that when the lighting is favorable, you get a nicely detailed shot with a pop of color, but an image that's balanced and realistic. With AI enabled, there's definitely some obvious enhancements, but you can play around and get the right look for the scene. In less than ideal settings, with a bright sky in the background, for example, things tend to get blown way out pretty easily. And the dimmer the scene, the worse it gets in the other direction. Detail is lost, you get a really fuzzy, grainy shot, and night mode is 
usable, just not very good. The wide angle also is hit or miss sometimes. It'll be decent in certain shots, but other times look drastically different than the standard picture. Overall, I think the camera setup on the Revel is sort of 50-50 on what you'll end up getting. Half the time the shots look good, and the other half you'll wind up with very budget phone looking images. It just doesn't seem like a ton of effort was put into the camera hardware. Like I said at the start, I might be unfairly critical of the T-Mobile Revel V Plus 5G simply because carrier branded phones are always a little bit iffy. But I honestly think T-Mobile has done a nice job with their own Revel brand, and this device is a decent option if you are a customer of theirs and you can get it for free. It has its drawbacks, sure, mainly the lower resolution display and the less than ideal camera capabilities, but it's a big, nice looking phone, it's built well, it has decent specs and good performance, and you could literally get it for free. And it might be a good introduction to the world of 5G as well if that works for you. So for those reasons, I really don't mind it at all and I can see it being a decent option for some people. But what do you guys think? Is this a phone that you would consider? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, of course. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video though. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys later.